<clears throat> Some companies. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Buddhist Biohacker. My name is Lisa Gunshore, and I am your host for the Buddhist Biohacker, which is all about creating conscious content for 1111D. And welcome to everybody who's joining into the live stream. You can absolutely use that chat box to the right to be able to ask your questions, share your comments and stories. Um, we would love that. And you can also join us on MeWe at Buddhist Biohacker Forum, where you can share all of your experiences there as well. We'd love it if you did. And I'm very happy today because we are back with Julie Hoyle because we can't get enough of her. She is such a light and such an incredible healer and gift to all of us. And she is back for her special monthly feature. So every month we talk about living in alignment. And Julie, I'm going to hand it off to you because I think, you know, I want you to share what you want to dive into today. Yeah, I mean, I'm thrilled. Thank you so much, Lisa. And thank you to all of you who are joining us for the live stream and for those who join, you know, later for the recording. So, you know, the whole theme, living in alignment, you know, what does that mean for you? What does that mean to you? You know, how does that play out in your life? And what I'd like to start with is just inviting everyone to consider at least one experience of a, what I would call a direct transmission or a connecting into source or, um, you know, this kind of light bulb moment that goes off that, that you absolutely recognize as being truth itself without question. And I'll give you a kind of a few minutes to think about that. And then maybe we can ask um, those of you that have joined us to maybe offer some shares and we can have a conversation. But, you know, I'd like to just as a kind of little starting point, I'd like to share something that happened to me when I was eight years old. And I think I've shared this before in one of the presentations, but it's really worth sharing again. Um, and that is that you know I used to I've always been a lucid dreamer and what would often happen is I'd lay down start to kind of feel myself going into the sleep state and then what would happen is I would pop out of my body my the my, my true essence the truth of who I am my spirit whatever you want to call that would somehow escape out of the confines of the physical body and sometimes I would leave through the heart, sometimes through the third eye and sometimes through the crown. And I essentially, I always, I thought that that was a, true for everybody. I thought everybody could do that. And that was just kind of a normal thing. And um, anyway, this one time I felt myself leaving and I floated through the window and then landed in the backyard and when I landed there were two angels huge huge angels with big angels wings and my grandfather was standing between the two angels and as soon as I started to sort of travel down and land I recognized that he was coming to say goodbye and I started to cry and he was probably, he, he was in his early 50s, so I mean, he, he wasn't ill, so it wasn't like we were anticipating, you know, his death. So anyway, I started to cry, and he said, oh, don't cry, you know, I just, ca I came to say goodbye, and then he said, no, that I love you very much, and um, yeah, just be a good girl, take care of your brothers and your sister, and I'll see you again. And then he started to rise up and the angels were with him. And then they just kind of disappeared into the ethers. And then I was pulled back into my body. And when I entered my body, I sat up and woke up. And I looked at the clock, it was 5 a.m. <clears throat> so because there was, you know, I, it, I wasn't in a sort of a family environment where discussions of those kinds of events was very welcomed. So I just, I'd always learned to keep quiet about it. So I went off to school 
And then later that day when I came back home, my mother said to me, you know, I came in the back door, my mother said, be quiet, your father's upset, your grandfather died at 5 a.m. this morning. And, you know, I didn't have the courage to say anything. And I, you know, I always regretted that later on because my father cried, that was crying very much, he was very upset. But, and there was a part of me that was also concerned that maybe I had had a hand in my father, my grandfather's passing, you know, this, you know, those strange ideas we have as children. So um, I just kept it quiet. But, but here's the thing that I, the reason I'm sharing this is that even all these years later, the energy inherent in that meeting, the energy of the angels, the energy of the communication, you know, in that experience is still very much alive. It's very active, it's very activated. So every time I think about that experience, it's like I can connect in with the angelic beings that were with my grandfather. I can connect in with the transmission that was given in that experience. And this is true for every single person that's listening in today. Whatever your experience, your direct experience with source is and has been up to this point, Every time you revisit that, you are receiving energy, active energy that hasn't diminished in any way. And it's activating your entire being with respect to recognition of the Supreme Self. So for you, whether it's in a lucid dream, a vision, a meditation, Maybe, maybe sort of a, a medium event or a, an event where you were channeling something or a moment when there was some sort of direct uh, kind of download of light and of a, of a sort of an activating energy. You know, whatever the, the, the details of those experiences are, they're as, they are still as potent and as powerful and as active right now as they were when they first happened, however many years ago. And this is really important to consider <clears throat> because what happens is sometimes we have those experiences and then we forget them or, you know, maybe there's not value placed on them. But the, the thing is, is they're really, really pivotal with respect to trusting source, trusting God and trusting that we do not need an intermediary, the ability to be able to connect in with source, which is actually who and what you are, is, is always right here and it's always available. It doesn't take years and years of studying or years and years of you know, meditation practice. The, the, the ability to connect in is actually always accessible. It's very simple. And it's completely direct and completely available. And I know, Lisa, that you, you know, you've, this has happened to you again and again and again and again. Otherwise, you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't have created this platform. You wouldn't be supporting people to come and share their gifts and their skills and their talents and to speak to that. I love what you just shared, Julie your story and it, yes. And it's beautiful because I just had this lovely conversation about, you know, trusting in what we see and feel and not allowing anyone to tell us that we're wrong or that we're paranoid or that, you know, we're crazy or whatever it is. And to really stand in our truth of what we see and experience and and so for you to share that story I think is just perfect today and mm -hmm. yeah there's these moments of of this beautiful light or you know a message lands or a dream happens and it's just 
you just know that it, it, it came from this incredible space and it stays with you for such a long time. And to trust that is that yes. everything. Yeah, you know, and it's the thing is as well is it's, it's getting into the habit. And I spoke about this on Saturday. It's like, you know, flexing mus a muscle, exercising muscles, but getting into the habit of listening and looking and paying attention to, you know, whatever is happening in our lives. And, you know, I'll give you a couple of very simple little anecdotes as well that have been really fun. Um, a few, couple of weeks ago, I think it was a couple of days after our first lockdown, because we've had quite a few lockdowns in the Bahamas. We're currently still in lockdown phase again. And um, so this weekend, we can't go out. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have to stay at home. But anyway, this is after the, one of the first lockdowns. So I was really, you know, contemplating because I was doing work for a client on um, lineage and what we what we kind of inherit through our family lineage and I was working with her energe energetically so I was kind of thinking about the family tree and all of those things and then um, Tony and I went for a walk and um, you know this landed right it was right at my feet and, and I just yeah, I just picked it up. I absolutely loved it. And, you know, I pointed it out and spoke to Tony about it. And I said, wow, you see, wherever we turn, wherever we look, we're always given pointers and directives and teachings and insights about our life. And support comes in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. Then a few days ago, um, and I posted this on, on Instagram, actually, I made a little video about it, but it, that for the last uh, two or three weeks, I've been meeting my friend, Julie, and two other ladies that live in our area. And we do, we lay out our yoga mats on the tennis court and we do some, you know, Pilates and aerobics and all of those things and play some jazzy music to try and get moving um, because we can, we currently in the Bahamas, we can exercise between six and 9 a.m. in the morning. So we go out, it's not too hot, you know, we do our aerobics and so on and so forth. So just as I was heading out there with my yoga mat, you know, I was thinking about angelic beings and the energy, it's, it's really unmistakable. I've had, I've had three or four or five angelic uh, visitations in lucid dreams. And in my experiences, what happens is I start to hear this very fine crystalline sound, like the sound of chimes or bells ringing. And it is completely recognizable. And I know that this an angelic being or force or whatever you want to call it is coming into my space. And it's just exquisite. It's, I can't even put it into words. So I was thinking about that I was, as I was going over to, um, to do my exercise so we set up our mats and then I said oh my gosh Julie look at that and then I saw this and this had landed um this had landed just by my yoga mat and Julie said I didn't say anything Julie said the angels have come to visit you and I said yes I know I'm just, I was just kind of invoking them and inviting them into my space and now you know, here they are, you know, in terms of a, a in terms of a, a visual image and reference point. And, and again, just as another little kind of anecdote, I was talking to my friend Julie for the last couple of days about the Lion's Gate, because, you know, we'd been referencing that um, on Saturday and there's been a lot of, you know, information online about the Lion's Gate. And for those people that don't know, you know, it's kind of a portal. There was an opening at the weekend. And I think, it's, I seem to remember, it's, it's in place until the 13th, I think, of August. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's this, there's this kind of open uh, portal right now with respect to being able to connect in with Source. And so um, I'd been talking to her about that and, and, and we were joking a little bit because she'd had a lot of challenges and so on and so forth. So... 
just this morning, you know, I lay, lay our mats, or we lay all lay our mats down and we were on our backs doing these like stomach crunches, and whatever else we were doing. And I looked up and I'm not kidding you, there was the biggest lion's head cloud formation. I couldn't believe it, it was massive wow. in profile and then like all the clouds, you know, coming out of it. I said to Julie, oh my gosh, look at that, Jules. So she looked up and she goes, it's the lion's gate, let's go. <laughs> so, 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 you know, and I'm just sharing these things because the thing is that when we become conscious, when we wake up to the truth of who we are, that is prior to the personal story, that awareness, which is source itself, then absolutely everything in the entire universe supports that seeing and it speaks to us you know in the most amazing ways constantly it's constantly constantly trying to kind of get our attention you know and and it just is the most incredible 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 gift because you just always feel supported you feel seen and you know, these gifts are around and with us all the time. But of course, we have to have the eyes to see. We have to have a heart that's open enough to be able to recognize. We have to be willing to step out of the mind that criticizes and judges and closes things down or questions, you know. So it's really about just being in that open space of receptivity, um, to, you know, and allow, us, allow ourselves essentially to be gifted by life itself and be in the flow of life itself. And really that is what living in alignment is all about. It's about recognizing that and living in harmony with that and um, just going with the flow of it and really enjoying it. Life really does become magical and amazing. <laughs> in ways that, you know, you couldn't try and sort of manufacture yourself. And I know, again, you've had experience of this, Lisa, for sure. That's how you live your life. It's just like one magic event after another, right? Yes. And I love this whole idea of the clouds because I am deep into galactics and ultra terrestrials. And so is my husband and my husband's worked in aerospace for years. So he is like on fire right now about this stuff. And he's been looking at the sky every night. In fact, the last two nights when he went to bed, he took photos um, because the planets, there were three planets aligned outside the window when he went to bed at the particular time he went to bed and they were so bright and so huge and he was so connected to that. But we had this really cool experience just a few days ago with the clouds too. We went for a walk, just him and I, and we were talking about all of this, you know, what's out there? What do we think? You know, what do we feel? What have we experienced? And we looked up into the clouds and all across, it was a huge part of the sky. It was these codes. It was obvious that it was a language. It was, and, and the clouds, it was like, it was, I wish I had my camera, but I refused to take that on my hikes and walks. So I didn't have my phone, but it was all of this writing in the clouds. And it was so obvious that that's what it was. And my husband and I were like, look, like they're talking to us and we're connected with that energy. And it's just so amazing. Like it's the coolest thing ever. Mm -hmm. And you have an awesome comment. I got to share this because I really love this. Adrian says, I love what you are both describing and speaking to and what a powerful story. A wise woman I once worked with would say, see, what you see. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? So I, uh, yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, it, just because I'm getting really big goosebumps, right now, you know, and the, I can feel this kind of down. Oh, oh, I can't be speak. So, so, you know, like here's something that's very interesting. So uh, in the early 90s, I was doing some studies 
through uh, the University of Minnesota, St. Benedict's. They had, they had like um, an offshore school here in Nassau. And so I was finishing up some studies with them. And one of the courses I had to do was on uh, the search for extraterrestrial life. As part, well, you know, one of the professors was really interested in all of that. So he set us all these different assignments. Um, and my assignment was to find out if there was, you know, any activity in the Bahamas. And I actually knew there was because I've seen some of it. So um, what happened was I went to, I was told to go to um, some of the newspapers. So I went to a couple of the local newspapers, The Guardian, which is one of them, and The Tribune, which was another. And I asked if they had any stories that were going back like 10 or 15 years on any sort of extraterrestrial activity. And I was a bit nervous about going, to be honest with you, because <clears throat> the Bahamas is very Christian. And I mean, it's changing now, but certainly in those days, you, you know, mixing maybe church and the belief in Jesus and extraterrestrials didn't exactly marry very well. <laughs> so, so I was a bit sort of tentative about it. So anyway, <clears throat> I go there. The guy says, yeah, sure, we've got plenty of stories. So he goes in the back and um, photocopies and pulls these, you know, old newspapers out. There were pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of stories about activity. And here was the interesting part, part the point of the, the story. Jacques Cousteau, you know, the underwater explorer, used to come and he'd made it a habit to come to the Bahama Islands for many, many, many years with his team to do all the underwater filming for his, you know, his uh, uh, documentaries and all the other things that he used to do. And I remember watching them as a kid, they were absolutely fascinating. So he had been coming to the Bahamas for years and years and years and years, and he and his team would anchor their boats off many of the family islands, you know, the Exuma chain and the Abacos and sometimes, you know, off Nassau. And what happened is they did their filming underwater, but be they became much more fascinated by the movement in the night sky and they started filming it. So they had all these articles and all this, 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 you know, these stories about what this team of scientists were actually seeing and capturing and recording at night in the Bahamas, you know, off these remote islands. And because that, you know, that there's, there wasn't the noise pollution, they got the most incredible images and incredible footage. And I don't recall, I don't know whether they actually did anything with it, but to me, that was just so incredibly fascinating. And what, at one point they became more interested in what was happening in the night sky than actually what they were finding un, under the water. So they've got hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of, of these kinds of recordings. And, you know, I know we, I was, uh, Tony and I were at a dinner party a few years back and um, we were seeing all this crazy activity in the night sky that, and we were just all standing there like, <laughs> you know, and that was pre, uh, you know, you mobile phones. So. Um, we were just standing there mesmerized because we hadn't seen anything like it. And there's a whole bunch of other stories I could go into. And it's kind of interesting. We, we've got into this. But, um, you know, it's really all of these things are really about making sure that we're paying attention in our own lives to what is showing up and speaking to us about, you know, what we need to look at essentially as well. Yeah, you know, on that point, like I was sitting in my office the other day and there was a cricket, a gigantic cricket, like in front of me, in front of my desk. And it's those kinds of things, you know, it doesn't have to be, you know, some big thing. It was like, there's this cricket and I looked it up. I was like, what does cricket totem mean? You know, what does that mean? And it turns out it's like actually very good fortune. So it's really great. I was like, sweet, like, this is great. Um, but it's even that, just like you're saying the palm frond that you found. And I had this cricket in front of me, like it's, there's, 
there's all these little messages and it's paying attention to all those little things. And I love that because that's what makes our life so magical. Yes. Those moments of like, oh, this happened or that happened. And, you know, just things pop up that just totally, it's like everyone, it's obvious that everyone is listening to you when things uh -huh. pop yes. up. Yes. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yes. You know, like you said, it could be the smallest thing or the biggest thing. And actually speaking of palm fronds, fronds the other morning, uh, Tuesday or Wednesday morning, I forget when it was, last week, I was walking um, to, to come back to look for my friend because she hadn't turned up for the class yet. And all of a sudden, a massive palm frond fell off the tree, off the coconut tree and whacked me in the back and, you know, scratched my back. So it's like, oh, okay, I need to read up what, you know, this means in terms of a message because it was just so unusual. <laughs> and it just, you know, I just happened to be in that spot when it fell. <laughs> and I was like, okay, let me look and see what this is speaking to because it's speaking about something, especially with respect to, you know, maybe weight on my shoulder or something like that. But um, it was so funny, you know, and again, um, dragonflies, when dragonflies show up, I've had them turning up in very weird places. Like um, I posted last week, actually during, you know, we had the hurricane and the winds were tremendous and the rain was absolutely pouring down and we were inside and I looked out and there was a dragonfly that I've never seen anything like it. It had flown up to the corner the co where the piece, the concrete was with the wall where it joins with a sliding glass door. It had somehow fixed its nose against the wall and then its wings were doing this and it was just holding on for dear life because the force of the winds was incredible. And it stayed there for hours. I mean, three or four hours, <clears throat> excuse me. And then in the end, when the winds died and the everything sort of slowed down I was thinking you know is there anything I can do to help it <laughs> so you know I'm trying to open the door very slowly and quietly and then all of a sudden I guess the noise of the door and it caused it, it its wings flapped and then it just flew away and I was like oh my gosh I've never seen anything like this before to be able just as such a small creature to be able to hold steady in that kind of force was incredible and it really spoke to me very deeply about you know staying on force on point hanging in there just not kind of getting caught up in the drama and the noise and all the other stuff that's going on and just being one pointed about what I'm being called to and you know the, the dragonflies it, you know it points to infinity and it points to transformation. You know, there's a lot, you know, on drag the dragonfly totem, but it was such a gift. I felt like it was such a gift. And he or she arrived to give me that message. So, so you know, more and more and more of these kinds of events are happening. And it's not just happening to me, I know. It's happening to everybody. Obviously, as long as you're paying attention, you're actually looking and listening and seeing what is showing up in your life in support of you staying in truth with who you are. I have a great story about the infinite. You're going to love this. So yesterday, I walk out in the kitchen. It's like 1030 at night. None of us should have been awake. And my littlest was in the kitchen and she, we used to have, you know how they have those magnets with like the alphabet and the numbers and everything. And you put them on the mm -hmm. fridge and they could spell words. Well, over the years, trust me, you guys, like those have gone, like it went from a full fridge to like, we have like two left because they fall off and you get tired of picking them up or whatever. Anyways, Somehow, I don't know where this came from, of course, but I walk out in the kitchen, it's 10 30 at night, and she goes, Look, and she had the magnet of the number eight. And she, and where that came from, I don't even know because I don't even remember that we still had that. But she goes, Look, it's infinity. That's what she said last night. She didn't say the number eight. She goes, look, it's infinity. And I was like, oh my God, you're so amazing. 
That is amazing. Isn't that amazing? And then the other thing about the dragonfly is so really interesting. And this is, this is totally funny because I'm happily married now, but a decade ago, I was definitely in my dating drama. And every time I saw a dragonfly, for me, it meant illusion. So every time I saw one, I knew that whatever relationship I was trying to make happen was just an illusion. And the other day, and I haven't seen one in the longest time. And the other day I was, I was, I go outside to do my channel transmissions and I was getting information and a dragonfly showed up and it just happened that the information was all about, you know, breaking through illusion. And then here's this dragonfly. So it's like this great reminder. So those are two other fun, like synchronicities. And I also made a note because you were talking about how more of these things are happening. And I think the more you pay attention to it, the more it happens. It's like you invite it in, you let it happen all the time. And it's like, it just never stops. And it's really joyful and fun. Yes, it really is. And, um, you know, the, the thing as well, <clears throat> excuse me, with respect to dreaming and lucid dreams, I mean, rem I remember you and I were having a conversation a few weeks ago where you said you came to visit and you were helping uh, fix a curtain. Yes. <laughs> right <laughs> and uh because the, the hammer dropped or whatever well that's exactly the case it's still i still haven't got to it actually <laughs> in the room i'm in now that's sort of what we call the pelmet at the top you know it's just it's the hem is hanging <laughs> and then remember you said that i came to visit you yeah uh, oh yeah I, I had a dream that's right i had a dream i was in your house and there was the kids were there and there was a lot of kind of, uh, you know, fun energy and everybody's like running around, whatever. And you were fixing a meal and then we were having a chat and the whole thing. And then later, I think you wrote and said to me that you found a Bahamian coin. Yes, I did. And it wasn't even me. It was my stepson. And he found this coin. He goes, what's this? And I like, look, and it's from the Bahamas. Like, how yes, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. And uh, the, the thing that's happening as well is I'm getting a lot of uh, emails and messages from, from people that, have, you know, I'm working with and are taking the Living in Alignment course. And they're all saying, oh, you came to visit last night. You know, some of those dreams I remember. I remember going there and being with them. We have a conversation or I'll just go over some teaching with them or something. And, um, and they're having memory of it. I'm having memory of it. And we're actually meeting in the subtle planes and we're visiting one another. And that is happening more and more and more consistently. And I'm sure it is to do with this movement, this expansion of consciousness, this awakening that is happening. And it's happening to more and more people. And especially those that are, have already been on the path and they've been doing spiritual work for a while. You know, these, this kind of an ac acceleration, if you like, of, of this expansion of awareness that's happening, that is exponential. It's just, it's happening of its own accord and in its own way. Uh, and that is obviously unique and organic. And um, I guess it's, I always want to say comfortable for, for you know, each person but sometimes it's not so comfortable My, sometimes it can be quite dramatic but it's really about just being being conscious and being awake and being willing and saying yes to this 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 expansion and this awakening to the truth of who you are and i'm sure this is the case and this is true with every single person that's listening in or who watches later Otherwise, you know, we wouldn't be having these kinds of conversations. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, it's absolutely incredible, you know. And this is the great positive that's coming out of this, you know, COVID situation and everything else we're in. It, uh, it is an incredible opportunity for deepening into the truth of who you are and li living from that space. And, um, you know, looking for signs and symbols and, and, and knowing that they're always there. Yeah, and I think there's something to be said, too, about those synchronicities being um, even all of us connecting with each other. You know, yeah. like I'm starting to hear people. I've listened to more 
like podcasts and things like that than I've ever listened to. I'm finding all sorts of people. There's a lot embedded in YouTube. You know, there's a lot of great information and I'm starting to see like, oh, this person's talking about something that I relate to, or I had this dream, or I watch a podcast and I have a lucid dream about that person in the podcast. Like there's so much of all of us like connecting with each other in these synchronistic ways too. Yes. Well, it was like you, you shared before we came online, before we came on the live, right? Mm -hmm. About the book that you're reading that was referencing something that I'd shared um, earlier on. So, yes. So, so just to kind of prefer, or give, give context to that, what happened is in one of the presentations I gave, I forget when it was. It was you and me and Taria, and we were talking about... <laughs> It's the one before, I'm going to find it while you're sharing the context, because then I can let you guys know, but it was me and Tari and Julie, and you were referencing this prophecy. So I'm going to find it while you're talking here. So anyway, just to kind of like give a, a little story about what, what happened, but I, I was sharing in that uh, presentation about a lucid dream I had. And I can't even remember when it was now. It may have been the late eighties, the early nineties. And I was in this lucid dream and I was given this opportunity to choose my gifts. I was given this big book, you know, and I could choose my gifts and there was a list of all these gifts. And um, I chose prophecy and healing and the Native American shaman, the chief shaman said, be very careful with the gift of prophecy. It's dangerous. And I said, yes, I understand that. And I use it, you know, with devotion, with love, and I use it appropriately, you know, when the time is right and, and that's how, it, how it's used. And then later they um, took me into this ceremony where they kind of tied my arms and my legs to these wooden um, posts. And then they were chanting around me. And then the chief, the Native American chief was you know, shaking his rattles and chanting. And then he started to stamp around my body and then he got closer and then he stood on my chest and started stamping his feet really heavily. And then he, with the final stamp, he stamped and he completely cracked my rib cage and cracked my sternum. <clears throat> and then with his feet, he sort of pushed open the space. He plunged his foot into my chest and then with his toes, he, he took my heart and he turned, he was massaging, kind of massaging the heart. It was very painful, but it felt good in a strange kind of way. And then he said, I am turning the heart in accordance with the blue star prophecy. And then he took his foot off and then he was, they were chanting again. And, and then I felt myself being pulled back to waking. So the thing is, is I had never heard of the Blue Star Prophecy. I didn't know what it was. And I remember trying to do some research and couldn't find a whole lot about it. And I'm sure there's, there's quite a bit online now. But I knew that it really was very powerful and it was really important to align myself with whatever the message of that was saying to me. And I knew that there were going to be big changes coming in terms of what was happening in the world, in terms of people waking up to who they are. I knew that my, uh, my purpose, if you like, was tied in with that, with respect to sharing the teachings and sharing the um, initiations and all of those things. I just didn't know how it would play out. And I certainly didn't anticipate that, you know, we would be online speaking about such things. Um, so anyway, all of that said, Lisa was uh, discovered a book that her husband has and has had for many years, right, Lisa? Mm -hmm. And right in the beginning of the book, there's a whole description about the Blue Star Prophecy. And I don't, when was the book written, Lisa? Do you know? What does it well, say? It was, so this book <clears throat> was, it's called, so for everybody, I'm telling you, everybody should read this book. It's called Star Ancestors. 
Indian wisdom keepers share the teachings of the extraterrestrials. I mean, how amazing is that? And um, it's written by Nancy Redstar, who's in Taos, New Mexico, which is where my dad's cabin is. So don't worry, I'll be writing her to see if we can get her on the show. And it was written, I'm gonna find it here. It was, she. so she was in Vermont. So it was um, post, it says Rochester, Vermont, um, copyright the year 2000. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, and what's even cooler is, so you, you spoke about this, so everybody should watch. It's, it's episode 17, Following the Golden Thread, which is like an amazing podcast in and of itself. So it's worth watching um, where we talked about this. And I'm having a little moment of awareness because they mentioned the Blue Star prophecy and the Blue Star people, but they haven't got into the details of it. Well, in a completely separate research space of mine, um, I was learning about the law of one and they were talking about Mars being a planet that, that didn't, um, their collective consciousness didn't rise the way it was supposed to. I mean, I, I, it's so complicated, but that's really the easiest thing to say. And that it, it was all the aggression and the anger and, and what they did to that planet. And it, you know, created the atmosphere that it's created and <laughs> kind of collapsed that civilization um, depending on what you believe. So in here, they talk about the red star. I only got through the first couple chapters this week because it's been so busy, but they talked about the red star. So I'm having like my own little download epiphany while you're talking about this, Julie, because one of the things that they talk about in the law of one, which is the channeling of raw mm -hmm. and raw is the collective consciousness of Venus, high blue star, and Venus actually was born, the, the people did not have opposable thumbs. So they didn't care about making tools. And so the planet, essentially the consciousness collectively went to where it's supposed to go very fast. It all went into its source. And so Venus is part of why it's known as the planet of love and the goddess of love and all these things, which is the blue star. So it's gotta all be connected somehow. I'm just realizing this right now. Wow. <laughs> How cool is that? But yeah, Julie talked about the blue star like months ago now. And here I'm like reading it in this book and my mind is like blown because I'm like, oh my God, this is what we were just talking about like not too long ago. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's so, it's, it's so amazing the way these, these things show up, you know, and, and, and this is what I was referencing in the beginning as well, actually, is that, um, going back you know even though i had that lucid dream that i've just shared you know many years ago when i go back into it or i tell the story or i remember it the energy of it is still so powerful and so palpable and what happens is i see new layers or new teachings or new insights that i hadn't seen before that that are now accessible and I'm seeing clearly what they're saying and it's it's just so incredible it's so incredible I my whole I'm like on fire Julie because whatever has been brought in here I'm like all these things I so ah uh, so you guys years and years ago Julie and I had this conversation and she was talking about a past life that I had as an aboriginal woman <laughs> And it was mind blowing. Oh, I'm just, this is so good. So it was mind blowing because I have such a connection to the Aboriginal energies always, always have. And I have this book, this book is called, and I'm going to pull it up for you guys, but it's, it's, uh, the, the wise women of the dream time essentially is what the book is. I'm, I'll find the title here in a minute for you too, because I literally just worked with somebody in Melbourne, Australia, like two hours ago. And we were talking about this book and I haven't talked about it forever. And in this moment, Julie, I'm realizing, so, you know, here we are talking about the history and what's right and what's wrong and what's history versus history. And it's the speaking, the, the verbal stories. And one of the things they say in this book is that blew my mind last night is they're not allowed. These Hopi Indians are not allowed to share their stories through the electric wires. 
And so yeah. they're passed down. So this book, the point of this book is actually the stories to be passed down about these experiences with the ultra terrestrial beings. And that wise women of the dream time is also stories passed down through the generations. And we're being gifted in this very moment through Julie's discussion to talk about these incredible stories that are being passed down. That is like the coolest thing ever. Yes. And, you know, I, 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 one of the things that's coming to me to be spoken of now as well is um, another lucid dream I had. And this must be at least 15 years ago, or maybe more. But um, what happened was I woke up in a dream and I was in, it was somewhere like somewhere in South America. I didn't know exactly where, but it was almost like an Amazonian kind of rainforest. And there were these like native women who were dressed with it, with leaves they were covered in leaves and they had like green paint it looked like paint on their face and they welcomed me and they welcomed me into their kind of ceremony and we were in four lines there was about yeah there was maybe a dozen of us or more and we were in these four lines and we were chanting and moving and the sort of the the chief the, the woman chief said that we were she was teaching me to dance to the four directions and to chant to the four directions and to call in the energy and to remember the importance of ceremony and to honor the importance of lineage uh, but also to learn how to move beyond <clears throat> the, the sort of the boundaries of, of one's family lineage and to remember, to be called to a place of remembrance of source or self or whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so we were chanting and we were dancing, we were moving in these different directions. And <clears throat> they did other ceremonies where they were covering me with this green sort of paste and giving me all these wisdom teachings. And then after a while, I felt that I couldn't stay anymore because the, the energy of it was so intense and so kind of high. I knew I couldn't stay there for that much longer. And then I was pulled back to waking. And I, as I was coming back to waking, I said to the, this lady, you know, who are you? You know, what is your group? And she said, we are the ayahuasca. So then I landed in my body and then I'm thinking, I, I was, so I'm trying, oh, the way she said it out, she was like, Ayahuasca, you know, and I had never, I didn't know what it was. I'd never heard of it. So I wrote it in my um, journal and then, you know, I'm trying to find it online and I wrote it with, I wrote I, what, H, whatever. I, I couldn't figure out how to spell it. So I couldn't, I didn't get very far. And then a few days later, I went to Hatha Yoga, at Hatha Yoga class, and there was a new lady there, and I just felt compelled to go in, introduce myself and, you know, find out where she's from. And it turned out she was visiting, Grand, this is when I lived on Grand Bahama, she was visiting Grand Bahama, and she said she'd just come from doing a ceremony with her teacher, who is an ayahuascan shaman. And as soon as I heard the word, I said, oh my gosh, I just had this lucid dream. So then we started having a conversation about it and I started learning all about the, the, the ayahuasca tradition and the shamans and, you know, the ceremonies and the teachings and, you know, all the things that they do with this plant medicine. Um, and, and the thing, that, the reason I'm sharing this is, is that this, is, this was so outside of my sort of cultural identity if you want to call it that my direct experience you know here I was I was raised in a working class family as a Catholic in the UK <laughs> you know I'm in the Bahamas having an experience lucid dream experience with the ayahuascans who I'd never heard of and 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 you know and then I'm having a conversation with someone so it just is just so amazing the way these dream experiences or these messages or these symbols show up in our lives in ways that, you know, you could never 
engineer yourself. It's just, it's just incredible. It really is. I, this is making me think of so many stories here. I got to change our, I I'm, I'm produ a zoom producer. So let me get that right. Okay. So first off, we have some comments I want to share, but then I have another fun, another fun story that's just happened. I mean, really so many things have happened even in the last few days, but, um, let's see. So, um, grand rising says, I'm seeing 42 all the time. I had invited the audience to share some of their synchronicities. So Grand Rising said, I'm seeing 42 all the time. And they, and they also said, yes, be present because spirit is always talking to us. And then mm -hmm. Michael, or no, Michelle, sorry, sorry. Michelle says, I just learned a little bit about Grand Rising today. And I see in this chat, a person's name is Grand Rising. I guess I need to look a little closer at what that really means to me. That is so awesome. And Grand Rising said, cool. And Grand Rising also said, we have lots of dragonflies in Arizona. It's very symbolic. Adrian yes. says, I could seriously listen to you two talk all day, no matter where the conversation meanders. It's always so rich and interesting and illuminating. Thank you both for being who you are and for sharing. So thank you so much, Adrian. Thank so, you. Sweet. so sweet. It's and beautiful. It really is. And, you know, I had an interesting synchronicity too, because the collective said, oh, we want you to transform the number 13. And I thought, well, that's really weird. Like, I mean, I know that there's a lot of stuff around the number 13 and the Knights Templar and all these things, but um, it was just kind of a peculiar thing. It's like, well, what are we going to transform, you know? And I, I really trust. So I was like, okay, that's what we're going to do this month and we'll do it on the lion's gate. That's what they said to do. And then here I do this podcast with Magenta and they start talking about the number 13. And I thought, well, geez. And there's like a 13th astrological sign. I had no idea. Well, then like three hours later, I mean, three hours after that podcast, um, my husband's been doing all this research and there's like a whole connection with the 13 colonies and all these different things. And then I started doing some additional research and the Knights Templar event or tragedy happened on October 13th, 1307. My dad was born on October 13th, turned 13 on October 13th. Wow. So what? I mean, that's just this week, you guys. And, and I wonder like, Julie, don't you wonder, like there's, there's so many layers to things like that, that I don't even know we could ever understand really everything that's happening there, but right trusting. And I think that's what, what you were speaking to at the beginning of this podcast is it's just trusting it. We may not know what we're doing in that meditation when we're transforming a number or whatever we're doing or a symbol, or we're seeing that animal, but it, it, it's, it means so, so, so much. And, and we can't judge like what impact we're really making. Right. Right. You know, we've talked about this before, you and I, when something lands to do something, you know, whether it's write a book or, you know, like you build a platform or what, whatever the call to action is. I absolutely trust that because I trust the place it's coming from because I, I can feel and see and know it is a directive from self or source or spirit or absolute awareness itself, whatever you want to call it. So I know that in the receiving of that, it's kind of already done in a way. I just say, say yes to it. And I know that whatever help I need will show up, whether in the form of a book or a friend offering help or a message or whatever, I will be given whatever I need to be able to bring this, this directive into form and to work with it. And that has been absolutely unfailing for me since really since the very beginning. And it's that that gives me the trust to say yes, you know, rather than what, what I see a lot of my clients kind of where they stumble is they'll receive an insight or a message and then they'll worry about not being able to do it right or, you know, making sure it's perfect before they you know launch something or um you know questioning everything to death and you know when you question everything to death it really takes kind of the energy away from it 
and and then it, that it's kind of lost that that sort of that first impact or impulse and the energy behind it um, can be really affected by you know judgment criticism and over analysis and um, and then that can sort of thwart someone's movement into manifestation. So, and I know you and I really don't have problems. <laughs> yeah, but you know, it's tough because I see it like just, you know, with clients or friends or, you know, even my husband where you see them get in their own way. And I have done that not often really in my life. I mean, really, I have been pretty like, just go. But the couple of times that I've done that where you overthink, you, you miss it's, it's not even missing the opportunity because it's not even the best way to articulate it, but you, you miss that seed point moment where it's like, okay, go do this. And then mm -hmm. suddenly become disjointed and they don't, it gets all tangled. It's like you've tangled everything up and, and mm -hmm. it's hard to untangle that. And, and it is tricky. It's like just saying yes and doing it is like things just happen and and more happens from that I mean truly yes and, yeah I mean, and it's really it's really not about you know trying to get everything done at the same time it's just taking that very small first step yes yeah it's just baby steps just say yeah. yes and then worry <laughs> We have a lot of comments over here. We have Michelle says, right after my dad passed away, I saw the biggest red dragonfly present itself right in front of my mom. I have never seen a red dragonfly in my whole life. And now I see them all the time. And I just say, hi, dad. Oh, so sweet. I've and never seen a red dragonfly either, actually. Uh -uh, me neither. That's special for Interesting. sure. Interesting. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Any other comments there, Lisa? Um, we have um, Grand Rising just says, yes, lots of prophecy these days. There's lots of information. And that's so true. And I've learned a lot. You know, my husband is so, God, he's so good. He's just an, he, I've never seen anybody absorb information the way he does as fast as he does. I mean, he just tears through information like books and I don't, I just don't even know how he does it, but he has been on his own journey of awakening and discovery and has found things and shown me things. And what's so cool about it is, you know, we get information and it's trusting that information, you know, because I've gotten information and then he's gone and, and found the research that backs up that information. That's like, Oh, this is why this happened. You know, I had a lucid dream about George Washington that we talked about quite a while ago now. And, um, it was back in April or May. And there was a lot of symbolism in that dream that I didn't understand because I just don't know anything about any of that. And what my husband was able to uncover through that has like connected all those dots. And so it's like trusting, trusting what you're receiving and, and just understanding it. Even what you're saying, Michelle, about when you see a red dragonfly, you just say, hi, dad. It's like just knowing like it's real and it exists and it's it's there is like the biggest thing. Yeah, and it's you know it's not woo woo. It's 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 life itself. It's consciousness itself in the form of a dragonfly or a cloud or a bird or you know whatever. It's the shamanic way. It's the Native American way of living. It's the Aboriginal way of living, and it's really a call for all of us in the West to come back to the natural way of being and trusting what we're seeing and trusting what we're being shown and that really is innate in us you know and I think that's why so many people are having lucid dreams and you know insights and really connecting back in to what is true and real in terms of one's natural expression rather than this over-reliance on the critical mind. And it's amazing. What's happening is really amazing. And we're seeing it as well in, you know, a lot of the TV shows and movies that are coming out now that are diving more deeply into these profound subjects that really mirror what we're experiencing 
well, obviously, you know, we have to be sort of mindful about what we're choosing, but there's certainly a lot more choice with respect to, um, you know, content mm -hmm. that has this sort of deeper orientation for us and, and rings true for us. And that's why it's so popular. Yeah, I think that's, I think we're ready for it. Like I mm -hmm. think as a culture, as a as humanity, like we're ready for real truth. Like truth. Yeah. Yeah. And every form of truth. Yeah. Right. You know, rather than having it kind of dressed in a the, the robes of a priest. And you know, there's nothing wrong with the robes of a priest, but you know what I mean? There's you know, being especially in the West, we're taught, well, I was taught in the Catholic Church that, you know, we need an intermediary. You need the priest to help you connect with God, you know. And of course, all of that is just falling away and has been for many, many years. Yeah, I read somebody posted the other day on Twitter. They were saying, um, I actually think it was Laura Eisenhower, but that said, you know, it is when we look inside ourselves that we can finally rise up, you know, that we can finally to, to not look at, at a figure or a teacher or an energy to, to be our savior, you know, to really look within ourselves and that when we do that, that's when we become our own savior. And I think what Laura had said, I, I might try to find it because it was really good, but what she had said was, you know, when, when you let go of the external savior and you look within, like, that's when you find the energy of Christ. Like that's yeah. when that energy rises. And I thought, wow, that was really beautiful. Yes. Yeah. And it's the truth, you know, whether it's Christ or the Buddha or, yeah. you know, more current teachers, they're really just there to point the truth to you. And of course, in all of that, you know, as we've discussed, you, you have to deal with the shadow big work because unless you've done the sh dealt with the shadow, that will keep you separated away from the light that you are and the expansiveness of who you are mm -hmm. so you know it all it you know it all has its part to play but you know the the, the the outcome of being willing to dive into oneself and to welcome what's there is really incredible yeah. and it's essentially what we've all been looking for from the beginning yep so true in, you know in our own way we've searched for it and, um, you know, what a gift to discover that the truth is within one's own being. Mm -hmm. And that will be reflected in the outer. Once you live from that space and trust that, then that's when these amazing events and synchronicities start happening and showing up in, in one's life. Whether it's a raindrop, a spider, a leaf blowing across your path or whatever, you know, there's meaning in it and there's a message and there's some sort of um, significance for you that is a gift. Mm -hmm. mm. And that, that is God at play, or, you know, universal consciousness, whatever you want to call it. There's no restrictions anywhere. <laughs> it's just, you know, the mind places restrictions and things oh, that happens for some people, it doesn't happen for me. Mm -hmm. Or you need to be in a special place, you know, for those kinds of things to happen rather than being in your own kitchen, maybe peeling potatoes or something. You know what I mean? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, my mom, I just spoke to my mom. Yes. Uh, yes. Two days ago, I think. And, um, she said that she, she lives kind of in a higher elevation in Arizona and speaking of peeling potatoes in the kitchen and she was in her kitchen and making coffee early in the morning. And this beautiful female elk just came up outside her window and was eating apples from the apple tree. And she said, she just had this like lovely conversation with this elk for like an hour in front of her oh. kitchen window. And wow. I, isn't that amazing? That's beautiful. I would look at what does elk, you know, power totem mean, what does that mean? Yeah, I'd be curious. I'll, I'll have to tell her. Cause yeah, it was, it was just, um, like you're saying, you could just be doing something and all of a sudden, you know, just like I walked in the kitchen last night to kick the kids to bed and she's like, look, it's infinity. I mean, those things just happen in like the most incredible, amazing moments, you know, that are just, 
I wanted yes. to, there's a comment here and I wanted to share because uh, Grand Rising said, I had a conversation about ayahuasca this morning while I was paddle boarding. And then Grand Rising said, I've never done it though. And I wanted to share um, with all of you guys, you know, Julie and I have talked about this because neither of us have gone through the real ceremony. But one of the things when I was getting that, I had a lot of clients all at once, like talking about ayahuasca. And um, I spoke to Julie about it and Julie had shared, and I want you to share with everybody because she shared, you know, what, what we can invite in. And it, it really was a beautiful gift for me. And so I don't know, Julie, if you want to share about that, but I think it'd be helpful because you don't have to go there to have the experience. Yes. I mean, I can't remember the exact words of what I said to you, but you know, the point is that, okay, ayahuasca, I'm sure will help people go into altered states of being and have all kinds of experiences and all of those things which, you know, may be relevant for you at a certain point in your life. And that's all fine, as, obviously, as long as it's done in the right way, with the right respect and all of those things. But, you know, no, no one needs to do that, actually. You can invite that energy in. You can invite the ayahuasca uh, teachers in to your dream world or into your life, in a, you know, on the subtle planes. And it doesn't, <clears throat> especially now, doesn't mean that you have to pack your bags and go and join, you know, someone in Peru or wherever, you know, South America to do any of those practices. And the same is true with finding yogis in the Himalayas, going on these long treks and finding a teacher. All of that was very relevant years ago and very important. And now it's very different because we can invite the energy of that in right where we are. And especially with what's happening now in the world, we have the opportunity to be able to be in ceremony and in silence within our own being, in our own homes, in ways that you know, we may not have had before or, or not as many opportunities before. So those, those things are available to us. I think we just have to change our mindset in terms of how we can access the teachings or the energy of what is being given through those ceremonies or through those teachings. And I can really stand behind my words because for really since I was a kid, but certainly after I had a really radical spiritual awakening in 1989, I've had the most incredible dream initiations and teachings from His Holiness the Dalai Lama, from Tibetan shamans, from Native American shamans, from all kinds of incredible teachers and gurus and masters. And they have come and visited me and given me teachings and ceremony and initiations in, in the most incredible ways that have just completely changed my life. And I know it's not just me. This yeah. is available for everyone. And this is why I'm here saying this, because it is available. Uh, it's just a case of being receptive, being open, creating intention around that, and then inviting the energy of this grace into your life. And I can speak directly to that because that is what you said. You said, just invite the ayahuasca shamans to come. And so I did. And I wrote it out on a piece of paper and I put it under my pillow and I was like, okay, like come and visit me. And they did. And I had a lucid dream experience and it was actually really interesting. You know, what came for me out of the ayahuasca dream mm -hmm. and it happened to me and my husband at the same time is the experience that we had connecting with ayahuasca is we don't want to eat meat anymore. So we're in this whole new journey of trying to explore what that really looks like and, and starting to, you know, minimize and just kind of change our diet. And so it came in, it was very profound shift for us. And at the same time, it was a very mundane shift, you know, it's just kind of changing how we're living. And so, you know, when Julie says this, she's right, like, go do it, ask them to come in, receive the initiations and see where it, you know, leads you in your life, because it really 
is so accessible. And I remember years ago, it was probably like 2014, I was living in Boulder, Colorado, and I was just really wanting to go to Dharamsala. Like I'd done volunteer work for the Dalai Lama. I was like, I want to go to Dharamsala and my health, like to go to someplace like that would just be too much for me. Even now, I just think it's probably not for me. And so I did a meditation and I was like, oh, I just want to go to Dharamsala. I was like, really? And his holiness came in this meditation and this vision. And he said, Dharamsala is right here. Yes. That's the only place you need to go. And it just, I've just always remembered that, that I don't have to journey somewhere to be there. It's Mm -hmm. in us, our cells and our body. And I just, you know, it's so accessible to us. If you say yes, if you just do it. Indeed, it's right here. It's always here. (laughs) This is like my favorite podcast I think we've ever done. I'm not going to lie. This is awesome. I just speak to what I'm asked to speak to. (laughs) Well, I love it. And I love you. And I want to take a minute, you guys. So Julie shares her awakening. Now, listen, she's talked about this awakening like a bunch of different times on Buddhist Biohacker, but never the full story. And she shares her full story in Awaken Grace, the documentary that is coming out on August 28th. It is being released on YouTube. So you can just come and get it. And the trailer is up right now. So if you go to the Buddhist Biohacker channel, just the main page, it's right at the top. Awaken Grace. And I actually will have an updated one. The trailer isn't really different, but the dates are different, but that one will be up actually like in mere moments. Um, But Julie is in that sharing her story. 13 people, there's that number again, 13 people share their stories of awakening in this documentary. And I just want everyone to see it. There's going to be three videos. So there's a director's cut. That's a two-part version of the movie. And then there's a final cut, which will be a shorter version that will hopefully be at film festivals and all of those different things. So you'll be able to watch the short version or the long version, which I would recommend the long version. Um, And then all of the interviews will be available also probably in September. I'm finishing the production on those. Um, But I'm really excited about it. And I hope you guys watch that and get to see Julie's story because the, the Shakti when she shares her story is like, I've watched these stories like a hundred times to make this movie. And, Mm -hmm. and I've had more profound experiences every time I sit in the, the production room and like work on the movie. It's like, I'm, I just can't even hardly stay in my body. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. And you know, um, in the same way, a lot of people that have read my book, An Awaken Life, A Journey of Transformation, have gotten Shaktipat, which is, you know, the awakening of the spiritual energy in terms of the, the yogic descriptor. But they've, they've awakened from reading the book because the energy of it is, is palpable. It, it, doesn't, it isn't diminished in any way. It's alive. It's activated. <laughs> it's incredibly powerful. So. Um, it's 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 amazing you know and i can't i'm not this isn't about self aggrandizement you know i'm just sharing what i was given through the grace of these great beings that entered my life completely unexpectedly i mean i didn't have a clue you know <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> and um i'm sharing their grace really is what i'm doing and i'm standing behind the words of that because because i receive not that i need validation but i receive validating evidence of the flow of grace from the people that either i've worked with or who've read the book through their own awakening experiences and so it's it's like the ripple effect and then that goes on you know they awaken and then they awaken people you know in their families and their friends awaken from being in their their company because once your state awakens, once you awaken to the truth of the self, there's a, the activating energy is, is, is current, it's activated within you. 
and then you have the capacity to be able to waken other people. And this is, this is how it works. And it's amazing. And every time, <clears throat> and really any, any show on Buddhist biohacker, I would say has some kind of Shakti, but every time I talk to you, Julie, every podcast we do, it's like something, you know, just unfolds for me always. Mm -hmm. and I know for so many of you guys who are watching. So we just love you so much. I mean, really time flies when we talk because we're out of that linear space. <laughs> I, I hadn't realized. I'm just seeing the time now. Wow. I thought we'd been chatting for like an hour. I didn't realize. <laughs> Okay. I love it. I was like, we'll just keep going. Um, but I, you know, you guys, thank you for being such a great audience. We had another comment here um, that says, this reminds me of the line from Stigmata, which is a movie. Um, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And mm -hmm. so true. Oh my gosh. It's like a great alternate title for today. Um, but uh, yeah, just thank you so much, Julie. And if you haven't heard about her new book, um, you can find that on her website. We will get everything up in the show notes um, probably in the next 24 hours. I'm going to try to do it very fast. But um, And the other thing is, is I will try to get this book up as well, the Star, the Star Ancestors book, if you guys want to read it. I think it's pretty awesome. And it's all these really cool stories by Native Americans who are sharing their stories with extraterrestrials. So I'll get that in the show notes. And Julie, parting words for us today. You know, I, what I would say, uh, and I say all the time, is just keep shining bright. Keep standing in the truth of who you are. D you know, live from that space. Trust that space. And be you. <laughs> you know, that, that's the most important thing. Really, really deepen into that truth and trusting that. And um, your life will be transformed. It's that simple. It is, it really is, you know? And that trust, I mean, you guys, I've worked with Julie for so many years and, and way, 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 way back in 2004, I think, um, when I first worked with you, you know, you had given me some prompts to invite that in. Mm -hmm. and Shaktipat happened within like 24 hours of that and everything in my life changed everything if you guys saw a picture of me I don't even look the same there's like nothing that's the same mm -hmm. and it was just trusting that you can ask for it and then saying yes when it's given yes <laughs> I love you so much. This has been the most fun, awesome time <laughs> ever. <laughs> I know. It's a, we always say that though, right? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. That's true. And um, I'm just so excited. And Julie is going to be back with us next week. Um, we have a round table coming up with Julie and Christian Strang and Magenta Pixie. So that's coming up. Um, and uh, of course, she's here every single month with us for her Living in Alignment feature. And you can catch her book, her new book, Meeting the Shadow, Finding Yourself, um, on her website, juliehoyle.org. And the documentary is coming out. I mean, it's just awesome. And you're working on another book. So that's yes. going to be coming out. Um, yes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, yes, fun. yes. What can I say? <laughs> I love it. You know, I, I am going to ask for some space for my own writing because I haven't had time at all, but um, I've had fun making movies. So I guess I'll go with that for right now. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what's calling you now. <laughs> It is. And I love it. So I love it. And, um, and Julie's books are so accessible. You guys, all three of them, um, they're easy reads They're The activities are easy and she's not kidding. Like there are massive shifts in your awareness as you're, you know, connecting in with those books. So, um, thank you so much, Julie. I love you so much. Thank you. I love you too. And thank you everyone for joining in. I really, well, Lisa too, we both really appreciate it. And keep supporting this amazing platform. 
and make sure and subscribe and make sure and tell your friends about this platform for conscious content because it is really incredible. It's a gift. It so is. Oh, I have an exciting announcement too. I am opening all three summits up, 111 hours of content tonight through September 11th. Um, so that all of you can get the tools and the support you need. So yes, we appreciate and love you so much. Um, Grand Rising said, I'm going to invite the energy of the ayahuascans in rather than drinking the actual medicine. Thank you so much. And Michelle says, I am so glad I was able to catch this live. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for being a part of our journey. There's so, so, so much more to come this year. Um, and, uh, it's just, uh, just it's beautiful. We all love you. Our community is beautiful. And just like Julie said, don't forget to subscribe and tell everyone, like when you're feeling overwhelmed or down and out or suffering or stressed about the planet, like just come to Buddhist biohacker and watch some shows. You'll feel a lot better. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love all of you. I love you, Julie. Bye guys. Have a good day. Bye.